Creation or evolution? Do we have to choose? Must we choose? Or can it be that God created by an evolutionary process? This is what I want to discuss with you in these tapes, as I've discussed them already on Arabic tapes. And we are going to look at what science tells us. What is the meaning of evolution? Many people take the dictionary meaning, but of course, once we link the word evolution to Darwin or to the species of plants and animals, then evolution has a specific meaning. Uh, some religious people think that evolution speaks against God and some atheist scientists, and these are not most of them, but the lower number, a smaller minority, that believe that evolution would eventually answer all questions we want to know about this world. Hence, uh, we can always ask how, 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 A became B, B became C, C became D, and so on. And as long as we are going to discover all the hows, then we don't need to ask the bigger question, which is why? Why is it all like this? Now, the bigger question is a metaphysical question. It's not a scientific question that can be studied in the lab or discussed uh, on scientific uh, materialistic basis. Uh, the why is a bigger question as we will look at it now. Uh, there is actually no contradiction between creation by God and evolution as the mode or the method by which creatures came to be one following the other. Uh, and uh, just to let you know at the beginning, Charles Darwin, when he wrote his Origin of Species, the first book that published his theory in the mid-19th century, he actually published it in 1859, he didn't speak against God. He didn't speak about how life all started from nothing or how this universe all started from nothing. He only said that once there is life, life could have evolved and moved in that sort of direction. And that is a very important point. It is atheists who tried to take the work of Darwin and fool and kid the ignorant believers to tell them, you see, now what Darwin is telling us is completely against the Bible. The Bible is telling you it was six days and he made Adam from dust. Evolution says things were not in six days and it was not dust, literally. Therefore, the Bible must be wrong. So uh, narrow-minded theologians at that time started to say, well, no, of course not. The Bible is not wrong. And the argument started and it is still ongoing. But the fight, as we will see, it's between narrow-minded theologians and narrow-minded atheists scientists who call themselves scientists because science works in the realm of the how has nothing to do with answering the big question why am i here why did all this happen and theology which is the interpretation of the scriptures the revelation of god through the word of god in the bible is there to answer the why and not to tackle with the how so science has its own realm, theology has its own realm. When each one of them tries to cross and tries to give an opinion on the how from the theologian or on the why from the scientists, this is when the conflict starts and it has nothing to do with God or creation. So what does actually the word evolution that Charles Darwin speak of? Uh, this is a very good description of the tree of life that you will see in front of you now. And you will see the whole uh, diagram or uh, nice drawing made by the BBC called the Tree of Life. And it shows you that origin of life started. And then we will come now to talk about the origin of life. But let's just look at the tree. We don't know yet from how, how the seed started. But we will come to say the theories behind that. Darwin didn't speak about the origin of life. He spoke about how life, once it is there, it evolved. So the tree starts to, to show you on the lower half of this tree, as you can see. On the left side, you have most of the sea-type creatures, uh, which are small creatures and jellyfish and worms and starfish, uh, etc. On the right-hand side of that lower part of the tree, you see the fish growing upwards towards the animal kingdom and another long branch which is growing into the plant kingdom. Trace that branch that's going from the fish upwards and now we go to the upper half of this tree and look at it and see that from the fish started to have amphibians, 
uh, that have part of the life in water, part of the life with lungs later on, uh, on earth becoming terrestrial. And these are the amphibians, those who live part in the water, part on earth, on the land. And out of these, like the frog, for example, another group came which are on the right hand side on the top here, like tortoises and crocodiles. And from that you started to have the dinosaurs and above from these reptiles, which have these four legs and creep on earth you started to have the birds developing and it was only in the last 60 years or so that we discovered a good link, the Archaeopteryx, which is a bird but carrying both the qualities of a bird and a reptile. And then from these came the birds. The other line, as you can see, developed upwards into the marsupials like the kangaroo and so on and animals that belong to this group and upwards into the uh, mammals and of the mammals on the top you see the uh, great apes or the primates and from them came man and the other branch to the apes and when we studied it genetically studying the chromosomes we found that the closest to us from this ape uh, group was the chimpanzee. Now this doesn't say as you can see the top of the tree that in the future a chimp, a chimp will become a man or a man will become a chimp because each one is going to develop into his own branch and cannot re recourse himself backwards regressing and going into another branch but each branch grows upwards and upwards and upwards so all what we've seen in this tree is the fact that what evolution is telling us is Darwin and 50 years before him even a Frenchman called Lamarck started to look at things and say, oh, dogs, they look very similar. Pigeons, they look very similar. Uh, birds and finches, they look very similar. Yet, there are differences. And from this, they started to say, could it be that the differences came by some changes in the same species? And then when that question became more answerable by, yes, it is probable, then they started to think, and could it be that all species were all related to one another? Uh, is it all a tree? Is it all something that started from the point of life starting and then the stem of the tree and the stem branched and then later on more branching and the branches branched and branched and branched so that at any time we take a cross section in history it shows us where we were at the bottom of the tree and then a little later the animals that live on the tips of these branches and later on the animals on the tip of these branches and later on now the animal kingdom as we know it that was a suggestion. As time went by, the fossil record proved that yes, there were beings on this earth, like say the dinosaurs, the most, common, uh, the most famous of them, that lived on earth definitely, and we discovered the skeletons, but they disappeared. So everything, as they suggested in the theory of evolution, grew like a tree, and we will come also to understand the growth of the embryo, uh, how the embryo grows in its mother womb. If you take the embryo, it's one cell dividing into a few cells, more cells, more cells. At that stage, all embryos are the same, whether I'm a fish or a monkey or a, or a man or a rabbit. And then they start to grow a little more. There is a head, there is a back, there is a tail and some uh, arms and legs or four uh, limbs and the hind limbs started to develop. We all look almost the same. Then things started to change and each one is taking its own line to become its own species. Looking at this we can see also how we can understand that there is nothing against the fact that God put the mystery when he created this whole world out of nothing that it will have laws in it and that's the very important thing that it, it these laws that we find in nature, the natural law, demands an intelligence and either the intelligence is in matter or outside matter. If you say it's in matter you worship the stone and the tree because they become your God, because they understand and they are more intelligent than you. If you accept that the intelligence is outside matter, give it whatever name you want, depending on your philosophy, your faith, your religion, but you accept it that there is another intelligence outside matter that controls it. And that's what we will discuss in detail together.